Here we are installing our Canadian Solar EPQ battery backup system. We have on the ground in front of us the Canadian Solar uh, EPQ wall bracket assembly that has been pre-assembled. It has the battery base already attached to it. The next thing we're going to be doing is attaching this assembly to the wall. Following this assembly, we'll be stacking our batteries and using the wall brackets to go ahead and attach each one of the four batteries that we have. This is a 16.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery system. We've got our screws consolidated, all ready to go. They're laid out. And then off to uh, the other side, we have our wall brackets that are not part of the wall bracket assembly that's already been pre-assembled. And we have our trim panels, our screws, our side plates, everything all organized. You'll notice that the batteries are facing us. You wanna make sure that you minimize your body movements. So when you stack your batteries, go ahead and put them in a position where you're just gonna lift them up and put them down right on the battery base or right on the previous battery. So make it easier for yourself. Give a little advanced thought into how you stack everything up. This is all perfectly laid out, ready to go. Let's start one foot off the ground. As we mark one foot, this will establish the base point for the bottom of the wall mount bracket. If you mount the EPQ wall mount bracket at this location, it will allow you to expand to the maximum of six batteries without exceeding the maximum height allowable by the code for the switches and the EPQ hybrid. Once you have your mark on the wall, you can go ahead and grab your template and mark the holes that you need to drill to set your anchors in the wall. The self-adhesive on the EPQ template will allow you to attach it to the wall. When you're mounting the EP cube wall template, you want to make sure it's level. There is some flexibility in the mounting holes, but the more close to level you can make it, the better it will be for your installation. You can use the self-adhesive on more than one location if you need more adhesive power to hold it on the wall. Once you're happy with the location of your template, you can move on to mount to indicate where the holes should be drilled for all of your bracket assemblies. With the four battery system, you start from the bottom and mount each battery at the holes located. When you get to the fourth battery on the top, you also have to mount the hybrid. The hybrid uses the top set of holes in the four battery hybrid location that also says six battery, but you want to use the top set of holes in that square. Once all your holes are drilled, you can go ahead and mount your wall mount bracket. You've already assembled your base to it. You can hang it from the top set of holes. And if you can access, you can leave the wall mount bracket on the, the base on the wall mount bracket while you mount the lower holes. You may need to remove the base temporarily to go ahead and install the bottom holes. When you're ready to stack your batteries, you wanna double check the Lego chip to make sure there's no particles or any fouling in any one of the pin locations. Once you're sure that the Lego chip is clear, of any debris, go ahead and grab your battery and stack it on the mount that you've already put down. As you stack your batteries, align the left side first. Lower the right side slowly as it inserts into the electrical connection. Go ahead and secure the side bracket plates. Oh. As you're mounting the bracket assemblies, you wanna use hand tools so you, don't, you avoid galling with the stainless steel fasteners. If you use power tools, be extremely careful and run them at their slowest speed to avoid galling and making the fasteners unusable. As you stack your batteries, level each module to ensure the entire stack is level, secure, and flat. Here's a pro tip. If you're mounting on a surface that doesn't require drilling and you don't want to use the template, you can easily flip the wall brackets upside down and you can stack the batteries and screw the bracket into the wall after the battery is stacked on its base or battery below it. Once your EPQ battery base, batteries, and hybrid stack is completed, 
you're gonna wanna make sure your end of line communication resistor is installed. The resistor may be previously installed within the area indicated, or it may come in a silver bag like this one. If it comes in the silver bag, remove the resistor, install it in the appropriate terminals. Your end of line jumper resistor will go between the CAN L and CAN H position, opposite where your communication terminal, your communication cable is terminated. Once you finish the installation of the EPCube hybrid and battery stack, you're gonna to wanna to move on to the EPCube gateway installation. Note that we left the sides off the EPQ battery stack for commissioning. So we like to match the height of the EPQ hybrid top with the top of the EPQ gateway. So we're gonna transpose the measurement from the top of the hybrid over to the location at the top of the gateway, go ahead and drill our holes. Once we have our holes drilled, we can use the bracket that has the mounting hooks that will actually hold the hybrid up without any screws. So once you get the bracket leveled and installed, you can simply hang the gateway from the gateway bracket. You'll notice the EPQ gateway wall bracket has two hooks. Those hooks allow you to simply hang the gateway before you put the screws in to finally hold it up. The stoppers on the back of the gateway allow you to level the gateway front to back. Once the gateway is mounted and level, you can go ahead and insert the two side mounted screws that hold the gateway firmly in place. As you can see, we're nearing the end of our one day installation of EPQ. This is our gateway. It's been completely wired. We have the utility meter over here that's coming in that feeds our grid terminals. We go through our transfer switch. We come down into our load that goes back out over to the same meter that's serving this was a whole home backup. We have our hybrid switch number one for our hybrid inverter. This is where we can turn on and off the hybrid inverter. We have our communication board where we also have another connection for the hybrid inverter. We have our neutral terminals, we have our ground terminals, and we also have two auxiliary ports where we would connect, for example, a generator or ACPV or EV uh, charger plug over here. Uh, it's very neatly done, comes through a gateway and connects to the other devices. We've completed the installation of our EP Cube hybrid. You can see this EP Cube hybrid has a Tygo RST transmitter. The power feeds go right in out of the junction box, go over to the gateway. We also have two strings on this particular installation. They come directly on the string inverter input section. We do have the, uh, the DC disconnects right here, the red switches, as well as the main battery disconnect fuse. And then just inside, you could not see uh, the terminal block that connects the batteries to the system. Very clean, very well done, all done in one day.